Hi everyone, welcome to the History of Football channel. Today I'll be doing another Forgotten Ground as part of my Forgotten Football Ground series. I've done quite a few videos so far, go and check them out. Maybe I've featured your club's old ground already or maybe I haven't, but go check out that playlist. Anyways, tonight's video is going to be Saltergate, the former home ground of Chesterfield from 1871 to 2010. In 1871, Chesterfield Football Club became a distinct entity from the Chesterfield Cricket Club, from which it was formed in the previous decade. Together, they took up tenancy at the new recreation ground, Saltergate, located just 100 yards west of their previous home, and the ground was used for both sports for more than two decades. The site hosted its first game of football on the 4th of November 1871, with Rotherham providing the opposition in a 14 a side match under Sheffield rules. A wooden pavilion was developed on the eastern side of the ground later in the 1870s, but otherwise it remained simply an open field in this area. After the initial Chesterfield Football Club folded in 1881, a number of other local football teams used the pitch until the establishment of the second Chesterfield Football Club in 1884. The second Chesterfield football club would later be known as Chesterfield Town. A small uncovered grandstand with bench seating for around 400 people was added in the early 1890s. With the football club steadily progressing towards employing its first semi-professional players, it was also able to take the cricket club's relocation in its stride during 1894, shouldering the full rent thereafter. After Chesterfield Town were elected to the Football League, Division 2 in 1899, the club stepped up the necessitated remedial work on a pitch that sloped markedly from north to south, most notably the removal of the hill on the northwest corner and the spoil from which was dubbed at the Saltergate end. In addition, the grandstand was enlarged and roofed over. Its capacity increased to around 800 spectators. In 1909, Chesterfield Town were voted out of the Football League. In a bid to return, a running track was constructed around the perimeter, said to offer up to 10,000 fans a decent view, and a white picket fence was constructed around the pitch to replace the previous wire boundary. However, any ambitions proved short-lived. Faced with the abandonment of competitive football after the outbreak of the First World War, the club was forced into voluntary liquidation in 1915. A new club with the same name was formed by a local restaurateur, to play wartime football at Salt Lake Gate using locally based guests from football league clubs. It was shut down by the FE for illegal payments in 1917. The following year saw no senior football in Chesterfield, but Salt Lake Gate was used for local cup matches. A fourth club, the present day Chesterfield Football Club, was established in 1919 at the instigation of the local authority. It was during the inner war years that Saltergate saw its main period of development, when Chesterfield Football Club became founder members of the new 3rd Division North in 1921, the ground saw a new spurt of improvements. Throughout the 1930s several improvements to the ground were made. In 1936 the club borrowed around £14,000 to fund the erection of a new brick and steel main stand by the Scottish architect Archibald Leach. Dem demolition of the old wooden stand began at the close of the 1935-1936 season, which again saw the club promoted to the second division. The opening of the new stand came in November, with Sheffield United visiting for a league fixture and a new record crowd of 26,519 attended the game. With the completion of the new stand, all four sides of the ground had taken on the appearance that would still be recognisable at the time of its closure. In the 1940s, Chesterfield were looking for a way to pay off a couple of their loads and it was proposed at one stage that they would leave Salt Lake Gate around 1949 and propose a new site near the Walton Hospital, but the local council rejected the plan. Instead, the club made what was to be its final major investment in the ground prior to the millennium, engaging Leach and Partners to renew all the ground cinder terracing with concrete and install their patented crush barriers. The 1950s were a particularly bad time for Chesterfield and by 1961 they had dropped down to the 4th Division for the first time in their history. Due to boardroom stagnation, the installation of floodlights happened in the 1967-1968 season. Chesterfield were the second last club in the Football League to have floodlights installed. 
During the 1970s, very little work was done on the ground except in 1979, the centre section of the Compton Street Terrace was re-roofed and a wooden television gantry added, the only notable groundwork in the decade. Financial problems in the early 1980s led to the board again considering a ground move to the Queen's Park Annex. In the aftermath of the 1985 Bradford City Stadium fire and the general upgrade of football ground safety, a number of ground adaptions were undertaken. Most significantly, the construction of a series of emergency exits from the main stand in the form of flights of steps down to the pitch. Hundreds of seats had to be removed to provide more gangways. The club was also ordered to install fencing around three sides of the pitch days before the start of the 1985-1986 season. In the 1990s, there was further talk of relocation in 1994, and with a sizable group of supporters advocating for redevelopment of Saltgate rather than its abandonment, including the crooked Spyrite fanzine, they proposed a two-tier cop with smaller seated stands on the remaining three sides. However, new plans for the club to leave Saltgate in favour of Wheels and Mill emerged in October 1995 and were pursued avidly by Chairman Norton Lee in the face of substantial opposition. In 1998, there was further talk of move away from Saltergate, but once again, the local council stopped planning permission and subsequently, unsuccessful attempts were made to revive the move well into the next decade. In 2003, members of the Chesterfield Football Supporters Society voted in favour of the club pursuing relocation of Veald and Mill. A further vote in 2006 saw more than 90% back a plan to switch to the site of the former Demo Glass factory near the Chesterfield Sheffield Bypass around one mile from the town centre. The 2009-2010 season represented the club's last at Saltergate and its commercial department announced extensive plans to mark the end of the era, including a book, DVD and end of season gala. Chesterfield's final league fixture at Salt Legate ended in a dramatic 2-1 win against AFC Bournemouth. Yes, the same one that plays in the Premier League now. Following an injury time goal from Derek Nevin, the club's longest serving player, the goal prompted a brief and good-natured pitch invasion which later attracted national media attention after footage of a disabled man rolling his wheelchair into the Bournemouth half attracted over 100,000 hits on YouTube. In the weeks following the game, Saltergate hosted a series of final commemorative events including an auction of fixtures and memorabilia that raised £20,000 for the club. Two of the crush barriers from Saltergate were also donated by the club to become museum pieces at the National Football Museum in Preston and the Scottish Football Museum in Glasgow. Saltergate was later turned into a housing estate in the mid-2010s. Looking at some records at Saltergate, Saltergate's record attendance was 30,561, which was set when Chesterfield hosted Tottenham Hotspur in the FA Cup fifth round in February 1938. According to the record books, a total of 3,159 first team matches were played at Saltergate, 1,827 of them were league fixtures. Chesterfield's biggest ever league win at Salt the Gate and also it's the club's record ever league win come on the 17th of January 1903. It was a Division 2 match against Glossop and they won that 10 goals to nil. Their worst ever loss at Salt the Gate is also the worst loss in their history. On the 5th of September 1987 in a Division 3 match, they were beaten 10 goals to nil by Gillingham. Since 2010, the club has played at the 10,504 capacity Technique Stadium. However, it's also been known as the B2 Net Stadium and Pro Act Stadium, and that's where they played their football today. However, unfortunately for Chesterfield these days, they're not in the Football League, they play in the National League, which is the fifth tier of English football. So that concludes my video on Saltergate, the former home ground of Chesterfield and a couple of its incarnations from 1871 to 2010, which is a very long time when it comes to football grounds. So I hope that you liked my video on Salt the Gate tonight. And if you did, let me know in the comment section below. Let me know if you've ever been to this ground and let me know your thoughts and your memories about this stadium. They say that nobody cares about history. Nobody cares about the old days. Nobody cares about the, the old players and the, the grounds and all that but 
the people that subscribe to this channel and the people that watch the videos, you prove those people wrong. You prove that people do care about history. They are grounds and players and it's much appreciated that you take your time out of your day to watch my videos. Anyways, this has been History of Football and I'll catch us all later in the next video. Alright, tally bye for now.